Separation techniques in mining are indispensably imperative processes which use many diverse types of extraction techniques in order to produce important chemical elements. Copper is a ductile metal which has extremely high thermal electrical conductivity. Copper was the first used metal in history dating back to almost 7500 BC and still today copper is found in almost all modern electronic devices globally. Australia contains around 6% of the world's copper resources, predominantly deriving from Mount Isa in Queensland, which also mines numerous other metals such as zinc, lead and silver. In order to create the final product of copper, particular ores must be mined and put through a method of separation techniques. Calcoprite is one of these ores, and is subsequently one of the utmost essential ores for extraction of copper. Calcoprite is a copper iron sulfide and has a chemical formula of CuFeS2 that crystallizes in the tetraenical system and has a hardness of 3.5 to 4. Calcoprite is often a brass yellow with an iridescent tarnish. More than 75% of Australia's copper is produced in Mount Isa from the ore calcoprite. In order to extract copper from calcoprite, a process known as froth flotation is frequently used. This process includes the primary sulfide ores of copper sulfide and most concentrations of secondary copper sulfides being subjected to smelting. Particular vat leach or processes exist to sublimulize the concentrates to construct copper cathode. From the resulting leachate solution, but this is rarely used. The first initial step in the froth flotation process is the copper ore is ground and compressed to a magnitude where liberation occurs among the copper sulfide ore minerals and the gang minerals. The ore is then wet, suspended in slurry, and then mixed with exthenates or other regions. These then make sulfide particles hydrophobic. The volatiles like sulfur and arsenic escape as gases, forming this equation. Copper prites are altered to a combination The conventional regions include potassium ethylenoxate and sodium ethylenoxate, but dithophthalates and dithocarbonates are also used in the process. The process's ore is then introduced to the, a water-filled arteriation tank containing sufficient such as methanisbutyl carbonyl and air is continuously pumped throughout the slurry until the air bubbles attach the hydrophobic copper sulfide particles. The sulfides of Cu and Fe are moderately oxidized, forming this equation. These particles are then conducted to the surface in which they then form froth and are completely scraped off. The waste froth is commonly subjected to a cleaning cell. This removes exosilicates and eradicates other sulfide minerals that can affect the concentrate quality, which is sent for smelting. The roasted ore mixed with silica as flux is heated in a blast furnace by a hot blast of air. Most of the FeO is removed as a slag and a molten mixture of Cu2S and FeS called mate get collected in the heart of the furnace. All rock that isn't in the flotation cell is either discarded as tailings or further processed to produce other metals. Lime is used to make the process more efficient by raising the pH of the water, allowing the collector to ionize more and to proficiently bond the calcoprite and avoid the prite. Iron is in both primary zone minerals. Copper ores containing calcoprite are concentrated to produce a concentrate with between 20 and 30 percent copper in concentrate. There are many residual minerals and impurities left in the concentrate. Calcoprite concentrates typically grade between 37 percent and 40 percent copper in concentrate, as calcoprite has no iron within the mineral. Copper Cu is extracted from its primary ore. Prides. Froth rotation processes concentrate the 
ore. The concentrated ore is then roasted through the vibratory furnace when the succeeding reactions could occur. Byproducts of froth flotation extraction processes of copper from calcopyrite are called copper slag and have harmful effects on the environment. Due to the sheer enormity of copper produced, there are also large amounts of waste products produced. It is estimated that over 24.6 million tonnes of slag are produced each year. Unfortunately, there are several significant environmental effects of producing copper. As copper does not break down, therefore making copper a threat to the environment it surrounds, the chances of plants surviving in areas surrounding copper factories are very limited as copper effectively stunts the growth of diverse vegetations when it accumulates in plants and is unable to break down the earth. Due to the environmental effects of slag is causing to the environment, copper smelters are searching for technological innovation. These involve the unique reutilization of slag. Governments have created strict policies to protect the environment from as much damage as conceivable by giving the responsibility to mining companies to ensure they reduce the magnitude of waste disposition by endorsing recycling and reutilization. Fortunately, there are many positive effects that copper mining has on society. Virtually all electronic devices need copper to function, as copper has high electrical conductivity and copper electrons can easily be transported. Copper is the basis of all telecommunications, technology and transportation in our society, without which none of these would be deemed possible. Copper mining also provides thousands of jobs to Australians and postulates millions of dollars in revenue raising for the government. The production of copper not only provides thousands of jobs across Australia, but also has beneficial effects on the environment. Due to the fact that copper's recycling rate is greater than any other engineered metal, scientists have recently discovered that copper and its alloys can inhibit the growth of bacteria and viruses and fungi. Therefore, Copper mining plays an impartial role in our society and it will stay that way for years to come.